All right, the stream was giving me issues, and I don't know why. It's done that for the second week in a row. I even fixed my Wi-Fi beforehand, so it's definitely not my Wi-Fi this time. Either way, apologies for those who uh, those who were interrupted by the stream. For those who, uh, case in case it does, in case it doesn't save this the stream there, uh, in case you missed it. Um, in fact. I was gonna say, um, if you missed it, because it, it made the stream might not pick it up for the uh, upload on the YouTube. Um, it was Florian who got pulled. For those watching it back, apologies for the stream doing that again. I'm gonna have to figure out why that is. I don't know if it's because maybe Titan signed into the account automatically. I, I don't know what it is, but <laughs> it, that's kind of annoying. That's kind of annoying. Either way, we're readying up now. So let's see what happens on attempt number two. The thing I was going to mention before we get underway here and um, kind of prep for the start, I was going to mention how uh, there's something going on behind the scenes that I'm involved in right now that a lot of you in the RPL are used to seeing up on the YouTube or wherever it may be, and I kind of just gave it away, oops, that I think you guys will like. You guys will like it. I've helped out a little bit there, and I think you will like it. Some of you do know who it is, or some of you do, do know who it is. Some of you do know what it is. Some don't. That's okay. Either way, point being, it might take a little bit, but then uh, you'll like it. A lot of people will be happy about it. Either way, let's talk about some tricky corners at the circuit. Turn one, turn two. Sometimes it's tricky to go side by side. We saw that in the tier one race earlier this season. Turn to three, don't use your battery. That's quite simple. Track limits may be a big thing in that first sector quite a bit. Last sector as well being a big thing for track limits. Runoff area. Middle sector, that's a tough spot to go side by side. Those are your tricky corners and the championship standings. Grandpa comes into this race seven points ahead of Haunted, 10 points ahead of that person. And then 13 ahead of Valkyria as we enter today's race for Spain. Round number two of the season. Let's get things underway. All right. Just waiting on the drivers, just waiting on everyone else. We'll see if we can get Beatnik in here in a moment. That'd be great. Drivers editing their fuel, editing their strategy, editing everything else that they need to. Getting their setups and most importantly. Florian on pole for the second time as well. He bottled that Bahrain race, Florian did. But now he has a chance to not do the same starting from pole. A track that is so dependent on track position. Here we go. Time for the five red lights for round number two of the season. Here come the five red lights. And they're off. It is time for RPL action again at Spain. Florian leads them off into turn one, and already they're trying to dock out Valker, or sorry, JTK, trying to be alongside a grandpa and not have any issue. And diving down the inside of the Ferrari, there's contact. Around they go. That's the McLaren of grandpa involved. I believe that's Owen as well who's plummeting down the order. Both of those drivers getting involved in the turn one collision and going down the order. Molly, Valkyrie all trying to duke it out. And here's Hunt Gecko and Hunted for second, or sorry, third place in this race. Also down the inside in Vade, he takes two at one already on the opening lap. And now the Red Bull of Hunt is gonna challenge back. Also, Gecko trying for something as well. Gecko's trying back at this as well. He's going back down the inside at a place you don't normally pass at. He's gone through. Also, Kipu on Tadpole, and there's a bunch of cars with damage and a collision. That's Molly who's around. PK's got some issue as well. And he's in side by side with Owen. That's good tight. That gets tight. Tadpole also goes down the order. Tadpole was one of those drivers who picked up some damage. And down the inside, Leon Miner goes. That's an FBL. He slides in the process. 
And also, yo, flags the back now again for Molly41. And there's a big collision. FBL's around. That causes an accordion effect. And multiple cars have been affected by this. PK is one. FBL is one of them. It's absolutely carnage on the opening lap while Florian leads the opening lap. It's Florian ahead of JTK with Hunted, Tadpole, Grandpa all pitting. Third place in this race, Gecko, Invade, Valkyrie. That's a DRS train to look out for. And now more yellow flags. That's Molly again. That's in the final sector. Give you a look at the tires as everyone who had damage and had issues comes in to repair that as Owen is making a move. Now on Leon Miner, his former teammate. Outside line. Now it's the inside line. Trying for the cutback, and they come together. Owen pushes Leon off the road, and Leon gets the worst end of that. Tadpole as well also gets by his teammate Molly and Grandpa. As Tadpole, a lot of mistakes, a lot of issues in that first lap. Down the order. Back up the order two places. But Florian's the one up front, only one who's going to have DRS, only one who's going to have a chance here. For the rest of this race, it looks like to be JTK, as you have four different teams inside that top four. Gecko, fastest lap, it's all going to trade now between the drivers. Valkyrie is closing in now on Invade for fourth place in this race. The slipstream is extremely crucial. The setup difference, extremely crucial. You can see that's how Valkyrie gained for fourth place in this race. She couldn't do anything about it. And yellow flags, that is in the middle sector. That is Molly41, he is around. But Valkyrie is gonna try move on her academy teammate. It's Valkyrie on the inside line of Invade, gonna have the outside line for the next corner. Can't make anything of it. Now she's gonna try cutting back and see if she can make any move right here as they come to DRS for the first time in this race. Valkyrie looks like with a different setup compared to Invade. You can see Invade making a mistake right there, hopping onto the curb. That's a curb you don't want to hop on. You can just see what Valkyrie did. She gained by that. And now, actually, she doesn't have DRS right here. And the lead, again, is still close as well. Molly is out in the pit lane, so he's the first retirement of this race, and now Valkyrie gaining once again an invade, and more importantly, our lead is at stake. JTK with the DRS, Florian under pressure now. Valkyrie gets the move done, and now JTK's thinking about getting the move done. You saw JTK collide basically with the Ferrari driver on the opening turn, and it caused a spin from Grandpa and many others. Valkyrie invade fourth place back at it once again. Not close enough for a move this time. Molly's retired car coming out of the pit lane. It looks like it's not going to affect anybody this time. Track racer as well. We talked about him outside the top 10. Well, let's look at how many positions everyone's gained. Valkyrie up six. Mythic up six. Instincts up eight. From starting at the back of the grid. Track racer five. Track racer making a lot of hay in this race so far. Forgot to talk about the strategy completely, but you know, you look at the strategy, it's a uh, soft hard, medium hard. It's the way these drivers want to go. Either way, the battle for the lead still continues. JTK is a little bit closer this time, entering the final two corners. And can he get close enough this time to make a move on the race lead? Ferrari versus Mercedes. We've seen this, like, seen this a couple of times in RPL, most notably a couple of years ago. JTK closing that gap. Can he get there in time? No, not in time by turn one. Invade and DRS of Valkyrie, but he's not going to make anything of it. Kipu will make something of sixth place, though, and he's now ahead and will now pursue the charge and his teammate. JTK following Florian for this race lead and lap number five of this race. Remember, last season's Spanish Grand Prix was cut two laps early because of the fact of the red flag glitch at the very start of the race. So we really didn't get to have as much action, I guess, compared to what we have available this time. Creates a lot of opportunities for our drivers to do what they can to make moves. And you can just see Gecko as well on the soft tires as well lurking there in the background. Valkyrie also follows behind. The same amount of gap behind the other driver of 
DTK to Gecko and Gecko to Valkyrie. And now six tenths between the race lead. Look at the battery difference between them. 63 to 83. And none of them, actually, Florian's deploying his battery to try to remain in the lead. We saw what Florian doing that. And doing that type of thing did it to him in Bahrain. What it did to him is it set him back. And when he did, he did have an issue. He had no battery to recover. He had no momentum. Nothing. Nothing to come back from it. In the race last week at Bahrain in the season opener. A move made there at the back of the field. That's Leon, PK, and Owen. This is a nice midfield battle. That's my phone. Apologies if you heard that. And in front of that, Instincts also gets by Mythic. That's for 8th place. Mythic now going to go on the inside line at the next corner. This is turn 5. Nice side-by-side -side area in the middle sector to race. However, they usually get single file by that point, and they do. PK and Owen now side-by-side -side for the last points position. They bang wheels there as they head toward turn 6, and they now go single file once again. So Owen remains ahead, but he has PK and Leon Miner, the Red Bull Academy drivers following behind. Owen, a former Red Bull Academy driver, won the championship last season in Red Bull, and now being attacked by Red Bull, PK, who's going to go around the outside. Can PK get the move done here? Owen gives him the pinch, and Owen will stay ahead of the Red Bull Academy drivers. On the main straight, no one can make a move with DRS length up at the front of the field. However, 10th place is still an opportunity to be taken. It's Owen leading PK and then Leon Miner. And here comes PK with the help of DRS. PK is going to have his best shot yet to attack Owen. He's going to sit behind and now he ducks out. That got close to contact and it's going to be PK around the outside of Owen. However, Owen's going to still stick it in there and going to be around the outside. They do touch wheels and you saw PK slid there on the exit of turn two and he's now still around the outside line for turn three. Owen having the inside line now toward, toward turn four at the beginning part of sector two. None of them yielding. And Owen still holding the inside line while PK aggressively holds the outside line. And Leon waiting for his chance to charge. Here's Owen being dived on from PK. And Owen couldn't cover it off. And now he's going to try the grass. He goes under the grass on the inside line here at the chicane, which usually is not an overtaking spot. But PK stays ahead. Wow, that got hairy. And now it is time to invite Beatnik to the party. For the act. Get ourselves a co-commentator. How about that? And now the lead. The lead is at stake. JTK got close there on Florian. And he just couldn't make anything of it. JTK couldn't. That is for your race lead. Welcome along, Beatnik. Good to have you. Sorry, my mic was muted. Great to be here. All good. Um, All good. Oh, good heavens. It's lap eight. It is, and we've got some action on the track. A couple of battles on track. We have Trat Racer and Kippu for P6. We have the lead at stake. Nothing really has came from that with JTK and Florian. And then a 10th place battle with uh, PK, Owen, and uh, Leon. That's a, those are some interesting names to be battling for the uh, points positions. And uh, I see uh, Mally. He has DNF'd here. That is highly unfortunate. Yeah, both the Alpine drivers got involved in the lap one collisions. There was a lap one collision where JTK tried sticking it on the inside of Florian. Probably wasn't going to work. Might see a stewards investigation for that. That's why Grandpa hunted uh, even Tadpole and uh, Molly out of this race. That's why they're down there uh, from all that happening. And uh, meanwhile, of course, so, that will be here. JTK not yeah. using ERS. Three gaps, 0.3, 0.2. He's gaining, gaining all the time to the inside oh! there. And is he gonna make it stick? Let's go side by side through turn one, and once again, Florian holding the place. Defense. Yeah, there. JTK. Can't, JTK can't find a way past. He's tried everything he could. Another two oh, teammates two at Aston Martin. Is. They swap spots. We but, saw an Aston Martin uh, collide no, there not in again. the tier one not race. Again. Please no. <laughs> Invade is ahead, but did he overtake off the track? There, I saw all four wheels go off for a moment. Is he gonna remain in the spot for now? I think he will. Trap Racer follows behind, just hoping for something to happen. Well, uh, I mean, I, if you don't remember, there was a collision with the two Aston Martins in the Tier 1 race in Spain earlier this season. Yes. And it ended in tears. If this ends in tears again, then I'm just going to end both Astons from racing at Spain. So. <laughs> 
Yeah, for those of you not familiar, Beatnik is the Mercedes, uh, your, your team principal, right? Team principal, that is correct. Yeah, there you go. So exactly, that's exactly why you feel that way about your drivers and hunt. <sighs> Minor, Leon can't come. Well, yeah, Leon's in an alpha tower. That's very interesting. <laughs> Uh, oh, Gecko's in. Uh, that's soft tires. And uh, meanwhile, right, the two Essens again going side by side. Kipu and that's Kipu and Invade. Kip has made the move and back into fourth place he goes. Top two, they stay in line and stern, first and second. And Valk is having a, a very lonely race so far in, in P3. Very much so. Now here comes Hunted on Owen for 11th place in this race. This is just outside the points, but could become the points with how they've been racing. Around the outside, a little bit of a pinch, a little bit of a squeeze, but it's Owen who remains ahead for 11th place. Good um, stuff there. Yeah. For me, Gecko pitted there a little early. I'm surprised by that. I thought the optimal time would have been about two to three laps from now. And here's Owen again trying to defend the place. Oh, that's Hunted getting out of shape there on the inside line. He's going to have the inside line for turn five. Can Owen remain ahead for 11th place for the time being? Yes, they go single file now. Not the best of days for Red Bull so far. Uh, P10 and P12, best car on the grid. Not like it. Uh, meanwhile, battle for the lead. Uh, well, it's not really a battle. It's still just line and stern. And I think JTK is just a little bit too far back for this time. Yes, he is. Um, and Hunted and Owen again going wheel to wheel. And this time, Owen, Absolutely. Owen's staying in 11th place here. So Yeah, Owen fell back there on the start. He saw a lot of chaos in front of him. Might get some uh, nice, nice starting clips from his point of view, at least, when it comes to later on tonight. Hunted's going to charge back at this, though. Hunted finished on the podium last week. If he wants to finish on the podium again this week, he's got to get this place done now, and he's got to get it done quickly. Inside line for turn one. Can he keep it, though? Owen's going to go around the outside. Can he hold it? No, Owen backs out of that one. Yeah, Owen had no ERS there, so this is going to be hard to defend that one. So, P12 for, uh, I believe, the three time here to champion. Wow. So. The two Red Bulls. I, sorry, the two um, the two Red Bull Academy drivers, excuse me. Sorry to cut in Mythic and PK. That got close between them. Both didn't want to give each other their space at turn number four right there, and that could have ended in disaster as Gecko, now in the fresh and medium tires, looks to get past Instincts. He throws one down the inside, and he does go ahead. Simple move there for Gecko, and uh, I don't know. Uh, if he started on sauce, he could be on a potential two-stop strategy here. Very unorthodox, that is true. but um, you never know here. But he also has no ERS, so not ideal. Um, back up front, still half a second between the top two. And uh, both of them, well, ERS-wise, Florian, he's got about 20%. JTK looking very good, so... He's just gonna hang in there when he, for as long as possible. And meanwhile, the two Red Bull Academy drivers again. <laughs> just cannot get away from each other, whether it's one being an Alpha Tari, both being an Alpha Tari, both being in different Red Bull cars. PK in the better Red Bull gets ahead of Mythic. And you mentioned the two leaders. I find that very interesting as Leon Miner now looks to get by FBL for 13th. I mentioned the two leaders because their strategies are completely different. One starts on the mediums, one starts on the softs. It's interesting to see which one will blink first when it comes to entering the pit lane. Uh, I mean, you expect the one on soft tires to blink first. Uh, JK, JTK, he'll stay out another lap here um, and pick up another dosage of DRS. Um, you never know when it comes to soft tires. Uh, I don't know what happened to qualifying. I heard it was raining, so they're, they're fresh tires. Yes. If that's the case, it's Invade. It's a morning, and that's a shame. That is in the pit lane as well. He must have cut the entry and got a warning for it, picking up the first penalty uh, for track limits in this race. And now the lead once again. This is the closest they've been, I would say, at turn four there. There were two three tenths right there, as you see other cars following. PK on the mediums, Mythic who's on the softs, Invade going to the mediums, and there's a spin. Was that a spin? I swear I saw a spin. I just went by it. Um, maybe it was just someone getting out of shape. Or a neat 360. I swear I caught a spin. Yeah, maybe. Must have been a really fast one. 
as um, Owen is now behind Invade, who's just come out of the pit lane here. So this is interesting with that P4, P5, P P6 this area, P6-ish area where they were. You know, we'll have to see what happens when it comes to where they come out because it looks like where Owen's at, they're going to come out in, in a ton of traffic if these guys do not pit in the coming laps. And I just want to point out here with Gecko's strategy, he could genuinely come out in P1 here. Um, he's got a big undercut on uh, GTK and Florian as Pip gets a penalty for the same exact thing as his team may invade. So both Aston Martins with a big mistake there going for big points here. Um, but, uh, as I was saying, Gecko, he's in a prime position here to undercut both of the top two and take the lead here. He's got no ERS, but he, he's got some rapid pace on the medium tires. You bring up a very valid point as Kip is not coming out of the pit lane and he's going to be around his teammate because I look at that leader gap and it's 18 seconds, 18.3. I mean, obviously it's going to continue to close. The, the pit stop loss time here is like 20 and a half seconds. So there is a very good chance he's just undercut these guys by a ton. And the fact that they're sitting in DRS with one another, basically, whether it's JTK in front or Florian in front, we've not seen JTK go in front. Oh, wow, we've look at the battle look. between the Astons. <laughs> oh. Invade got past his teammate, and now he's up into eighth place, chasing Hunted, who I don't know if he's pitted, and FBL and Owen getting all slidey. And meanwhile, side by side for fourth place. Battles everywhere you look. Whoa. And that is Gecko getting past the Williams of Trap Cursor. <laughs> And that was crucial that he got by, too, as you see Valkyrie now coming into the pits for Mercedes. Smart thing to try to cover off, I would say, what would be fourth place. The thing for me as well that I meant to mention with Gecko is that, yeah, getting that move done now, you don't want to be behind him for too much longer. Look at the gap now, 17.8. If he'd stayed behind for quite a bit quite a bit longer, it would have been uh, really, uh, really damaging to Radio's race's tadpole is another driver to pick up a three-second time penalty. We're now seeing the track limits come in, and that's yellow flags. Who is that? That's is that an Alpine. That's Apple. <laughs> there you go. He's now going to get passed by Grandpa, who won the last race and is outside the points, looking for more. He's going to need a miracle to be inside the points today, or at least inside a chance for a good finish inside the points. Oh, that's Tadpole. Tadpole he's again, off. and he's out. And he's out. This could be a safety car. VSC. And you will well, this... more, most certainly see the top two coming in right here, right now. <laughs> well, this hampers Gecko's strategy. I mean, surely he'll be within DRS, right? Yeah. But this absolutely They're both in, halts it. And, we'll see what, and this kind of screws Gecko. I don't... If this, if this VSC stays for a long time, I don't see him getting out ahead of either of the top two here. Well, it depends on what he's done here to back off because I believe he's backed off in the extent to where he can get a good run out of the final corner, have a chance to go to the line with a decent delta, and then pursue his charge down the front straight and be just barely ahead. He might be out in front. Oh, no, here he's they come out of the pit lane now. Him. Oh, does he? It's going to be side by side. Side by side. It's going to be go. No, oh. and he hits the delta, as you were just saying, and he splits the top two. <laughs> The good thing for him, though, is he's in, D he's in DRS right now. Before that, he was only, what, two seconds? Maybe a second behind the race leaders? And that's a drive through uh -oh, from Instincts. <laughs> that's P4. He was looking to still pit. Now he's going to have to make two pit stops. And now for the lead. Gecko's closer. He's on six lap mediums, but he's on the faster tire compared to Florian. And now his opportunity, he's in prime position. This is his chance to go for the race lead. Big chance here for Gecko, trying to go two for two for McLaren here. Um, but also, JTK, he's on fresh mediums, so he's on the fresher and faster tire. Um, I believe he has to take those, well, half the race. So, <laughs> um, we'll see if JTK can get past the McLaren. And as you said, instincts, shame for him. He's going to have to make two pit stops. And I'm this... worried now for Gecko, though. I, sorry to cut in. I just, I feel like there's some, I know the VSC does help, but there are some risks for a puncture 
with when he pitted. 23 laps is a long time. And now, JTK is trying to make the move on Gecko while Gecko charges toward the race lead and none of them make anything of it on lap 17 as we're, on, we're halfway. Okay, and Hunted going wheel to wheel. Easy move for Valk. She goes ahead. Uh, Hunted yet to make a pit stop. He's on 15 lap old hard tires. And it's all happening right now. Invade gets past Trat Racer as well. Um and instincts looks like he's gonna come out in p9 behind kip and ahead of fbl so as you said he still has to make his mandatory pit stop so shame for him well and i will say i will say this though with other drivers you get to pit such as fbl now and maybe even hunted to add to that list this actually gives an opportunity for Grandpa to charge to the points now. This actually opens something up for him. And we've seen how fast Grandpa can be. Um, McLaren winning a, winning their first race in many seasons in Tier 2 last week. Um, Grandpa winning his first. He started out the season quite well. But, you know, there's always, there's always something that comes with it. And the last two seasons, the team that won the opening round ends up winning the second round. So Gecko has an opportunity to do that this time. With it being the teammate at McLaren, JTK looks. He can't do anything with it, though, as he still remains in third place now. About fastest lap, and uh, Gecko, he's blinking right now, so he's got 6% ERS compared to JTK's 93%. So I feel like JK, JTK, he can make this move whenever he wants. He's just buying his time and waiting for the right moment to strike here. So... Uh, I f I'd recommend him making this attack soon as he lags back for whatever reason. But um, we'll see what happens as Instincts makes a stop. And he is a long way back from literally everyone. Yeah, that's to no surprise. I think Gecko is out of DRS right there. In this moment, JTK, we spoke of drivers such as Valkyrie who have room to improve this season and have a chance to actually charge toward the title with, in my opinion, it being wide open. JTK is exactly one of those drivers. The last five races, top six in all those races. That's all you can ask for, being the Mercedes team principal, beat Nick. And now you got to make that further step and Here actually go goes. for the race win this Overtaken season. Able. Here he comes. <laughs> and it doesn't Outside get line. much easier than that. <laughs> Up into P2 goes JTK. And now he's going to charge on Florian. He's going to have to use those medium tires. And maybe a little bit of DRS back into uh, Florian's DRS range. The good thing with JTK now is Florian just used a lot of battery there through turn three. The battery difference, literally 50%. That's so much as Trat Racer gets by Invade for sixth place as well. And Leon is now trying to come at Instincts as Owen, now one of the last drivers to make a pit stop. He finally does. He's going to be going toward the mediums, it looks like. Definitely mediums there. He's starting on the hard tires, and it's going to be the same for Hunted. Actually, he stopped on, like, lap two for those hard tires, so we'll see what he does with those. Um, he's got but he's got three pretty fast drivers behind him, all of them, ironically, Merck Academy drivers. So, um, and double, ironically, it's a Williams leading two Astons. <laughs> so, uh, we'll, we'll, there you go. we'll say Trent versus is having a fantastic run in that Williams P6. Um, Absolutely. And we'll see. Where he started. We'll see if he can chase down Hunted. I don't know where he started. Uh, five places Eleven. left. Uh, so, and uh, I guess if on that topic, uh, make, make PK, he's up six spots. Valkyrie, he's up six spots. Uh, and Trent Racer, five spots for him, four for FBL. We got yellow, yellow flags. flag. That's Hunted. He went off. Oh. And I don't know if he's got damage. I think he's come away clean, but. He's now not in DRS of Trat Racer, and he's now under threat from the Aston Martin, who almost sent one right there. That was Invade. He thought of it, and he just thought better of it, too, as PK picks up a penalty. And I, I need to speak about PK for a moment. Running P10 with that penalty, it would put Grandpa inside the points. Not only that, but PK, not the start of the season that he would have wanted, had, had the qualifying ban, also had a lot of penalties to his name in terms of Penalty points with incidents from last week in Bahrain. Not to start for PK, but in a chance to try to recover it, a penalty is very costly for P10 right there. Yeah, especially with uh, Grandpa literally too tense. Expect a dive bomb here. He expects, well, he doesn't go for it. But uh, FBL, he also has yet to make a stop. 
Um, so they'll be in the points anyway. But he is right on the back of Make PK here. They are going for it here in P10. As we go through the flat out turn nine, DRS for Grandpa. Not using his battery, at least yet. Looks like he's gonna wait as Hunter comes in. Yep, Hunter's in Again. to uh, get those hard tires off. Probably a set of medium. See, yep, medium tires for him. And he'll be off and away. And uh, back to P10 here. This should be an easy move for Grandpa. He's right there. And they both got DRS. That's interesting. <laughs> um, yeah. Now it's on terms of battery and setup. Here goes Grandpa Pass. It's now P8. And oh, he's he going to be it. charging at P... <laughs> Whoa, that got close. He could be going at Kipu and Invade if he finds a lot of pace on those hards. And if the two Aston Martins do battle, you know, you just cost your time... Uh, you ca cost yourself time by battling, excuse me, right there, as FBL now fall, uh, falls behind Leon Minor um, in that area. And Owen, 15th, last of the runners from your uh, cha previous and reigning champion. That, that to me, is a big surprise. And Gecko comes in again. Yeah, I, that's what I thought. I thought he was doing a two-stop, and he is. I expected this. Um, gap is about 18 seconds to Trap Racer, so he better hope for a good stop. It's going to be soft tires. It'll be a struggle to get those to the end. And he better hope he comes out ahead of Trap Racer. And I don't, I don't think Absolutely. he is. Absolutely. <laughs> well, it should be between these two S and Martins. And this could get tricky toward turn one. Kipu on Invade. Kipu's going for the move. He is through on his teammate. Will Invade charge back at it, though? The answer is no. But these two S and Martins have to work it out and be careful, though, with Gecko because. If what they, what these Mercedes, or sorry, what these Aston Martin drivers can do is what they can cover off Gecko for enough time to make sure he does not catch Valkyrie. So this could be very crucial oh, if, those, if he just makes those soft tires wear out. And there they go. They made contact. I saw Invade and, uh, and Gecko. They, they made slight contact on the exit of turn four there. And it just sent them both around. I'll clip it just in case. But I, I don't know who to blame there. Uh, difficult camera angle. They just got it. looked like it was just two two separate lines and just formed contact. <laughs> Absolutely. And you know what this is just going to do? This is just going to hurt Gecko's confidence, hurt his tires. You know, if he wants to come back, he's got to try a little bit more now. And, you know, the good thing, though, is he's got the spot and invade. But he's now going to get the other Aston Martin of Kipu. He's currently inside the top five with the penalties applied if this race were to end with his closing rate. But, you know what? He's got to try a little bit harder now for that podium. And that effectively... As I was saying... Oh, sorry. Hold him up. There, Valkyrie. I was, uh, yeah, sorry, I was just going to say help. Okay. Hold him up there with Valkyrie. Hold him <laughs> up for a little bit to where Valk it takes Valkyrie a little bit um, longer to have Gecko in pursuit. And the two Red Bulls side by side on the main straight. I believe it's Hunted going ahead of PK. Yep, and uh, that effectively for Gecko, that effectively takes him out of any possible chance of winning this race. Um, he had to get by everybody as cleanly as he could. Unfortunately, that didn't happen. So now it's a race to P4 for him, which should be easy. And then can he get to can he get a podium out of it? Like you said, uh, Val, she's nine seconds what? ahead of Pratt, so we don't know. <laughs> the two Red Bulls. Uh, no, that's uh, Grandpa and Hunted. They're giving us a show right now, going through turn eight. I was, I was gonna say Leon and Owen, cause Leon tried sending one and Owen. He shouldn't have said it. I think he was just about to do it again. Surely not, Leon. That would be a bad place to try to do that. And from that far back, we saw what could happen from that far back before. And Leon, what is he doing? Leon's antics is back at it again. He's around, but he keeps the car going in a straight direction. These are some brilliant He's Leon activities. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely, and he's about to be lapped too in the process. Uh, speaking of the leaders while we're at it, we're, what, two-thirds into this race, you could call it now? Ten laps um, to go. JTK, yeah, JTK, 60% of the battery, while not too long ago, it was Florian who was below 10% right there. He's on 14% right now. Almost a 50% difference in those batteries. JTK, I know his medium tires would be wearing compared to the uh, hards, but 
he's got a lot more pace he can pursue compared to Florian. He has to do it to at least have a chance. And put him under pressure with that ERS. Put him under pressure to where he has to use a bit of battery. Because you saw Florian there with the battery. He does not know how to manage his battery in a race winning position as we've seen so thus far. Well, I mean, I've raced him before. Um, I mean, he, he's, he is very fast. Don't get me wrong. Absolute class driver. But there were Absolutely. moments. Um, Tier 2 last season, or two seasons ago, bottled the championship completely. Let Owen win it all. Um, but uh, aside from that, he is absolutely class. And unfortunately, not the best ERS usage in today's race. And uh, But in JTK's case, he still has to manage that battery. And even though it doesn't look like there's pressure, Florian could always get a penalty. And that would mean at this exact spot, he loses the race. And speaking of penalties, I'm going to have a look. Um, Good idea. So Florian, he has a warning, but it's for a collision with JTK on lap one. So uh, other than that, he's gotten warnings. Um... JTK, he has he has one morning. So only one morning between the two. So there's there's a lot of wiggle room for Florian. He could use up one of his warnings tactically. And speaking of warnings, FBL gets a penalty for track limits. <laughs> yeah, that's uh that's how said the points. That's in that area with Mythic Owen. All those drivers trying to gain spots and just to say as well late in this race if we do get a safety car right now as leon minor picks up a penalty nine seconds to his name if we do get a safety car now those five drivers who have penalties that's going to come in very costly and someone like grandpa someone like hunted down in eighth ninth place could take very well advantage of that or and even the instincts <laughs> yeah exactly the lead as well closing a couple of tents then then it kind of pulls out a couple of tents as well that's the exact pressure JTK needs to put on Florian if he wants to have a chance for this race win. Warnings might not have a deal with it, but just that mental game. And speaking of that mental game, Gecko's back on Kipu for fifth place. Is Gecko going to try it this time? He's going to have to go the long way around, and he's going to have to find some space that Kipu is not in right now to go for that spot. And he'll Gecko is just too far back. He'll think better of it in turn four after what happened uh, with him and in Invade. So, um... A lot better of it that time, but uh, even if he gets gets past both of these guys, he still has to close an 11 second gap in about six laps. So it is quite here the ask. Go. As here we go, Pip goes down the inside of Trap Racer, and he makes it stick. Owen gets a penalty. Who cares about that? Um, and Blue and Trout Racer, they swap positions, and can the Aston pull a three-second gap to the Williams? You would have thought that would have opened the spot up quicker enough for Gecko, but it took a little bit as Hunted gets Invade, Invade off the road, and now Gecko is on the road for P5 on the track, and now could be P4 on penalties. It's here we go, can we see three here. wide? Yes, it we do! Wide. No, it's not. <laughs> and this result, the Gecko might be losing two spots here. They're going side by side. Does lose two spots. Traverse are up to four. Kippo. Hero to zero. That's exactly what could happen. And now Gecko charging back at Kippo. Or sorry, Trat Racer once again. Trat Racer doing an amazing job for the Williams team to hold on to P4. But it could be coming undone with Gecko wanting to go for the move. Needing to make the move on those soft tires. These oh boy. Mercedes Academy drivers are doing exactly what they need to. To make sure Gecko cannot find any tire life to catch Valkyrie for P3 even if she gets a penalty or has an issue. That gap went from 11 to 12 and a half seconds in the span of one lap. So, I, I, unless something drastic happens in these in these closing couple laps, uh, I don't see Gecko even with the soft tires, gaining. Oh, there's contact! Whoa. Bump and run for Kipu. He doesn't make it work. And I think Gecko should see his way past the Williams, unfortunately, on this lap. Uh, he comes out of the final corner. DRS activated. Overtake enabled. We'll see if he can hear no comes. Gaining and gaining. Outside line. 
Is he going to be able to hang on to it for turn one? No, but he makes Trap Racer think because he can get the switch back right here if he has the momentum to around the outside. Can't get anything done from it. And now he's going to set himself for turn four, which we saw what happened the last time he tried to make a move at turn four. Inside line, fakes him out. Now we're on the outside. Going to try Alex Albin style to go with this, but Trap Racer gives him the squeeze. And now Kipu gets himself invited to the outside line. Can't make anything from it. Now Trap Racer runs deep. He can't keep the spot. gecko has got the opportunity to keep it on the side. The touch and now gecko is through finally it took him a couple laps but he's got the place i got he's got the place but at what cost now it's a 13.6 second gap the car ahead of him being valkyrie and it's it's a nightmare for him he was in the podium places the two stop with the incident with invade has kind of just derailed it for him and coming out behind the two Astons the Williams it's derailed his strategy completely he should be able to pull away from these guys um though nope, Trav Racer has ERS. a lot of ERS and he's not using battery. it here he comes here they go back at it Trap Racer inside line for turn one gets through easily that was very much with ease and Kipu he wants his shot now as well. He's got the penalty. He's trying to hold on from Hunted, who's got a lot of pace left in that Red Bull. He's seeing this battle. He's saying, hey, I need to be three seconds ahead. I need the spot. Grandpa gets ahead of Invade. They still stay side by side at turn three. It's going to be Grandpa excelling on the inside line for P8 right there. And could take P P uh, P7 if they continue to battle right here for what is P4 and JTK. That gap continues to stay the same for the race lead. It looks like it's going to be Florian's race unless there's something drastic that happens in the remaining five laps. Yeah, uh, I guess Florian must have listened to what we're saying because uh, he's actually been saving a, at least as much ERS as he can. He's up to 27%. Got a yellow flag. I think that was either Leon or Val. Uh, so, that was um, both. <laughs> could have been both. Valk, um, Valk, didn't lose, Valk didn't lose time, but I think Leon slowed down, and it actually didn't give Valk DRS at all. You'd think it would have, but it didn't. Here we go again for P4. Like Two have a lot saying, of battery. These are Leon activities. Echo doesn't. Leon activities. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Here we go. Round number however many this time between these guys. The three cars who gave us a ton of action this race will continue to do so. Gecko, not much battery to his name, but the overtake is going to be around the outside. Here he goes. He runs deep, so this invites Kipu once again. A bad camera angle, what? but Kipu gets what ahead. Around the outside wow. in turn two. Very impressive stuff by Kipu. He gets past Gecko. And like you said, with all this battling, this is allowing Hunted into the mix. And with the with quick penalty, it's going to drop him to P7 here. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And the thing with Gecko is, well, yeah, at what cost? And look at the gap with Hunted and Kipu now. I mean, what's the tire difference? Hunted's on mediums, Kipu's on old hards, and that's Leon trying to get out of the way, which actually affected Gecko's line there through the corner. And he's lost even more time to the cars in front. So Trat Racer doing an amazing job for the Williams team. Trying to hold on to P4. If I check back to last season, Williams didn't get a podium. And now Kipu's right in the back of him. Going to cost a lot of time though with the uh, penalty that Kipu has. And could have Gecko go by. But I check back to last season. I look at the, uh, I look at the exact finishes in Williams. I believe it was a P4 or P5 for their best finish. Would, I believe, tie it. Here comes Kipu once again. Has a penalty to his name, but wants to get the move done. With the Red Bull of Hunted closing that gap, can't get it done with a couple laps remaining. He didn't use DRS for, like, half of the main straight, so I think he's just trying to stay in his position right now, hold off Gecko, secure the P4, a miraculous P4 for the Williams team. Um, unbelievable drive from Trap Racer to just put that car where it is. We know it's tier two, but at the end of the day, it's still a mighty impressive performance as look who it is. Hunted has joined the party. <laughs> um, and we the, we're going to get a four car show here with two laps to go. Absolutely, they're giving the, sac the action that the leaders could not give us here. And now, Kipu, once again, trying to find his spot, whether it be P4, P5, P6, or P7. It will drop him on track, and here goes Hunted. Ow. 
Outside line there for the next corner. Easily got that done. And he's got to be careful because there was a little bit of an accordion effect that's caused a stack up. And now he hit the back of Kipu. And he's absolutely riding Kipu as they enter the final two corners. To push him along. Telling him, get going. I need the move. I need the spot. It's going to be P5 on track here. But at what cost? Because it could be P4 now. As Kipu with wide. the run on Trat Racer. Outside line. Can't do it. And now, oh, it was Hunted who almost ran in the back of Kipu. And he's going to have to wait a little bit longer unless he uses oh, Punt to pass. <laughs> and this absolutely invites Gecko around the outside while Hunted chooses the inside line that was open for him. Three oh, wide. They touch. They touch. There's three wide. Hunted. Hunted has goes he ahead. Has he done two in the one? He has it. Somehow, after all that, Kipu stays ahead miraculously. Trat Racer, he's got no ERS left. He's trying to hold on. He doesn't have much time left. It's a lap and a half. Kipu doing everything in his power to stay in P5 here. He knows he'll drop to seventh, so he's helping the Williams out. Does does Hunter go down the inside down here? He does not. And while all this is happening, Florian has started his final lap. But honestly, Correct. who cares? This is where all the action is. <laughs> Absolutely. We'll have to get Florian when he crosses the line and talk about him because he's going to convert two poles into one win, it looks like. Here's Hunted again. Is he going to have the opportunity this time? Kipu, five tenths back. Does he use the DRS? He's actually using some of his battery, it looks like. Here goes Kipu on Trent Racer. It's now or never. We're looking for three wide, potentially, in the turn one. It's going to be Kipu around the outside of Trent Racer. Both go wheel to wheel. Trent Racer gives him the door shut. And now, that with the door being shut, Hunted goes ahead of Kipu. And the leaders, lost the now in the final sector, <laughs> but Kipu wants more of this action. Inside line, unhunted. Can he go through? Side by side, almost contact. They slide, 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 but it is hunted. Who remains ahead with Kipu diving down the inside? They can't do anything from it. We switch to the leaders. Florian started the season on pole position in Bahrain. Took pole number two today. He's gonna convert the pole to a win. Hunt, it's Florian, around. First win of the season. Hunted went around, no, and it's game over. Oh, oh. wait, no, he's out of gas. He's out of fuel. <laughs> oh, no. And, Grandpa and takes And is going to get her first ever podium. He finally gets it done. And then absolute oh, oh. shambles for Hunted. He ran out of fuel. I thought he spun. He just ran out of fuel. And Trat Racer is going to convert a P4 for Williams. Absolute class for him. Kipu, P5, he'll drop to P6. Grandpa 7, good points for him. Invade yeah. and hunted. He's gonna drop to 10th here. Absolutely no fuel. And it's a shame for him. Absolutely. Valk as well, by the way, with that being said, or sorry, Trat Racer as well, with that being said. Excuse me. Ty's Williams' best finish that they had last season. They had a P4 last season, and Instincts gets hunted. On the penalties by four tenths right there. And we're still battling Owen, FBL, Mythic. We're going to see some tra uh, spots trade right here. But it all doesn't matter because it's outside the points. That was some entertaining stuff. I'm glad I joined. <laughs> I'm absolutely glad you joined too. Some miraculous racing there in the midfield. Some fantastic stuff. That is not my driver of the day. I'm giving it to a uh, track racer. P4 and the Williams. Yeah. What more needs to be said? I agree. Um, a little biased there from you, but I totally understand it. I really do. Florian as well, I think, deserves a second shout out. He's not a driver of the day for me, but he's a he's a shout out because, you know, he found the composure to manage the ERS and manage everything there. I'm interested to see what's gonna happen with JTK and Florian though, because they're a lap one collision. P ten on the grid to a podium from Valkyrie and P eleven to P four from Trat Race. Sir. Fair play to them. He did it in a Williams, in fact. So that's what makes it more credible for driver of the day. Here are your final results from the race. Florian winning the race. Two Mercs on the podium. Mercedes, in fact, looking at everything right here in the constructors, I believe they'll be leading the uh, constructor standings just barely over McLaren, Red Bull, and Ferrari. So fair play to them. And we'll get your final uh, runners here. Tret Racer, Gecko, Kipu, Grandpa, Invade, PK, Instincts. The points runners, and then here's everyone else behind that. There you go. Wow. In what about a water race we saw? I'm gonna agree with you. Lots, so many battles, 
a lot of entertaining racing. Shout out, like you said, shout out to Florian. Fabulous race from him. Uh, I got to shout out to Valk, her first podium. Got fastest lap to boot. Track racer, my driver of the day personally. Grandpa and Gecko, they both get a little shout out there. Solid drives from them and Gecko. Almost, he, I feel like if he didn't have the crash with Invade, he could have made that two stop maybe work. Um, I, but I still think P4 was the best he could have gotten. It would have taken a lot to catch up to Valk. He was a long way back. <laughs> Absolutely. I think with Valk as well to mention, it's not her first podium ever in RPL, but it's her first tier two podium. So congrats to her. Very well done. I, like I said, you know, I mentioned it before the race. I mentioned, you know, all Valkyrie has to do to have a chance at actually finishing well in the championship this season, whether it's actually contending for the championship or not. Because, like I said, it is wide open. Uh, all you have to do, if you're Valkyrie, in my opinion, is don't put yourself in stupid positions. Learn, learn the right time to back out. Learn the right time to not be in positions where there could be heavy battling, where you could be involved. Learn to put yourself in the right position. I know she had a quiet race, but she played it very smart. You know, it's probably going to be P4, but didn't didn't over worry herself with the whole Gecko situation because Gecko would have been ahead of her and the VSC did help her a little bit. But after the last couple of weeks with obviously holding off the rest of the field, not getting the podium in Brazil for ultimately sacrificing you winning the race, um, the last couple of races throughout the season with Canada and, and other races where she really could have had a podium but didn't, we're now seeing the turnaround in the coming of... Uh, the coming of Valkyrie in RPL, and it's uh, really interesting to see. Same with JTK. This is now, what, the sixth top six finish in a row from JTK? So a lot of top sixes for him. He's just got to find himself on the top step of the podium now. Some impressive driving all the way around, and in the Drivers' Championship, uh, if I'm not mistaken, that might put JTK um, P1 in the Drivers' Championship. Um... um. Not, don't quote me on that, week. but I think so, because Grandpa, he Looking was in the now. lower end of the points, and uh, two right. podiums for JTK, I, I feel like the math just adds up there. So, um, JTK finished, I'll do it right now for you, actually. JTK finished P2, 18 points. Valk had fastest lap with P3. Valk would be ahead of JTK, but would Valk be ahead of Grandpa? I think Grandpa holds it just barely. Then it becomes Florian Valk, or or Valk Florian, whatever the case may be, and then JTK. But even then, like that's four drivers in a really like boxed in position for for me, in my opinion. And you know, with with the way things look right now, with what an eleven race season for Tier Two again, this absolutely the door is wide open. Anyone has a chance at this, but it just depends who's going to find the momentum at the right time. It'd be interesting to see. <laughs> Makes me wish I was racing. Uh, unfortunately, I can't make. I can only make like one of the next five tier two races. So I, uh, I got rid of my contract Ooh. for that reason. Um, Absolutely. So Smart. you'll see me in tier one tomorrow. But um, Absolutely. overall, awesome, absolutely fantastic racing from a lot of the field. Did not see many accidents. Um, of course, there's only yeah. one DNF all race with Mali. Um, yeah, that's so. a thing you just pointed out that I didn't even realize. That's the first time that's happened in the last, uh, how many ever seasons? There's only one DNF in Tier 2. That last season we had, what, there was three, and actually I'll go with the last 12 races because of the start of this, this season in Bahrain. Um, three DNFs in um, the last 12 races. That happened four times. No, 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 none, um, none less, you know, so only one DNF today. Um, impressed with that thank you for pointing that out it was a retirement in the pit lane too from molly oh that was a retirement in the pit lane did not know that yeah he had damage i believe he might have had rear wing damage so who knows well, he yeah, did um, get involved in a couple of collisions there penalty. in the opening start though so. yeah very very uh very fair point either way <coughs> excuse me choking there for a moment either way this weekend to cover the rest of the action we have rpl f2 at 12 or sorry 11 15 a.m eastern 4 15 p.m uk tomorrow the i mean speaking about rplf2 for a moment and there is zanvort tomorrow same with tier one at 3 p.m eastern 8 p.m uk speaking of f2 that's another one i know scyther didn't race last week but that's another one where 
a lot of opportunities for a lot of names to be made. Crispy just won his first race right there. We had Gerard in Tier 2 who won his first race last week. Florian, we see him finally put some good racecraft together for um, what what was actually a really good performance. And um, as well, it was um, it was Mythic who hadn't won last season in um, F2. Finally won. We're seeing some names kind of put something together, Beatnik. What do you think this moment is in RPL currently of, I, I'll say, the second half of the Tier 1 season and the... Um, the, the point where everyone's getting used to the game, everyone's getting used to everything around it. Are, do you think, uh, agree or disagree, do you think we're seeing um, some of the drivers who had poor starts of the game, had poor ends to last game, had something that they needed to prove, something that they needed to find, something to just show they belong or whatever it is, or even just uh, the return of some people? Are we starting to see that happen again with some names in RPL now that we used to see or that we're finally seeing again? I mean, we've seen a lot of interesting names towards the top. Um, it could be many different factors. Them, like you said, them figuring out the game, or them just f all that practice getting dialed in, or just them finally getting lucky for once. We don't know. They could have had a really solid race, and that, they always happen. Um, there were some names. I mean, uh, F2, for example, Crispy. He, he struggled last season to finish a race together. Like whether it be Absolutely. crashes or just getting wing damage or any of that. Penalties. Penalties too. That's a big one. Um, and he made it in Qatar last week. He put it all together and drove away from everyone on pole position to take a crushing victory. Um, and and with Mythic, um, I can speak from experience. He was he was quick last season. He he just oh, I he think, to his name too. I mean, not a win, but podiums. So many names out there, and even myself. I wasn't the quickest last season. Uh, I struck. I really struggled on this game. Nowhere near as quick yeah. as I was last season. Um, but so just starting to get used to the game's physics and how the cars work and all that jazz, and uh, it just comes together to form a lot of different guys finding pace and getting better, which just forms great racing. <laughs> I mean, it's that simple. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, F2. Tomorrow, we mentioned the time. They're at Zanvoort. Same with Tier 1. We mentioned the time. Tune in for that. Next week, we are in Austria for round number three of the season. That should be a fun one. Make sure you join me in the comms box once again for the action. Make sure you turn your notifications on. Follow the channel. Do everything you, you can to keep up to date with RPL. We will see you next week for Tier 2 and tomorrow for F2 and Tier 1. It's Beatnik and Ryan signing off from comms. Have a good night.